Good morning, and welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living Sarasota. Whether you're a member, a regular attendee, or you've just found us, we want you to know that we're here to support you in finding a personal relationship with the God of your understanding and discovering what you already know. My name is Jim Grove, a licensed spiritual practitioner here at the center, and I greet you with Namaste. Namaste is Sanskrit and means the divinity in me recognizes and honors the divinity in you. Let's begin this morning by affirming our vision and mission statements. The words can be seen on your screen. Please feel free to read aloud with me. First, our vision, empowering spiritual growth as a loving, inclusive worldwide community. And now our mission. We teach science of mind principles and other life-affirming spiritual truths. We explore, we learn, we grow, we connect, honoring all paths to God. We offer in-person and online weekly services, classes, workshops, affirmative prayer support, and other spiritual tools. We create opportunities for joyful social connection, community outreach, and service and we celebrate the awakening of our innate spiritual magnificence. As we prepare for our time of prayer and meditation, I invite you to relax, close your eyes, take a deep cleansing breath and go within as Bob Teasdale sets the tone for us with a chant entitled, There is Only Love by Karen Drucker. In this moment, in this place, I remember who I am. Letting fear and worry fall away from me, I open my eyes and I see. There is only love. There is only love. Love that heals, love that sets us free. There is only love. When I lose myself When it seems I've lost my way When I go inside and quiet my mind I can hear Spirit gently say there is only love There is only love Love that heals, love that sets us free There is only
love that sets us free There is only love There is only love There is only love Love that heals Love that sets us free There is only love Love that heals Love that sets us free There is only love Please join me in this beautiful meditation inspired by Ernest Holmes, the founder of our science of mind philosophy. There is only one life, which is God. This life is expressing in, as, and through everything. It is therefore expressing as me, and I am one with it. Because I am one with God, I am one with all people. Because I am one with life, I am one with everything that lives. I feel my union with people and with nature. I feel that I belong to life. I love life and I enter into the joy of living. I enter into companionship with others, into cooperation with them. And I know that something within me reaches out and embraces the whole world. Something within me blesses everything it touches, brings life and happiness and joy to everyone. Something in me acts as a healing balm, restoring everything to its natural and native perfection. As I silently listen to the spirit within me and think of its perfection, I know that I am being born into joy and hope and gladness, born into love and faith and assurance. Silently, I release every negative thought from my mind. I release it and let it go. And I too pray for the recognition of the unity of all people everywhere in the words of Jesus, the master teacher, when he said, that they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us. With a grateful heart for the wonder and beauty of God's infinite creation as it unfolds in divine perfection, I release my word of truth, trusting that it is already so, and so it is. Our spiritual leader, Reverend Karen Wolfson, is with us this morning. Her message is entitled, Wonder, Wonder Everywhere. But before we hear from Reverend Karen, Bob is back to sing one of his own songs entitled, I Am Reminded. Welcome, Bob.
Every time I plant a seed That a little soil and water Is all it really needs How it grows into a flower I don't have a clue I just keep on adding water And it knows just what to do And if I ever forget The kind of faith I need I am reminded I am reminded I am reminded Every time I plant a seed I am reminded Every time I see a tree Of life's unique expression In every single leaf They are all reaching For their own place in the sun Each one a different face But still a part of one And if I ever forget Now we're all one family I am reminded I am reminded I am reminded Every time I see a tree Of the joy and hope and wonder In the face of my child Her world is full of good things A place to laugh and play With no cares or worries To steal that joy away And if I ever forget How simple life can be I am reminded I am reminded I am reminded Every time She smiles at me Every time Every time I plant a seed Thank you, Bob, for that beautiful original creation. And you know, that's pretty much today's message. Life's unique expression in every leaf, every tiny seed, each a different face, but still a part of one. How we're all one family, the joy, the hope, and the wonder of it all. My theme for this month is wonder. And it's an invitation for you to start 2022 knowing you can live in wonder every day. But first, I have wonderful news. Sean Scanlon has joined our team of spiritual practitioners. Who is Sean? Well, Sean, his wife, and two teenage children recently relocated to Sarasota from California, where he served two of our centers. He completed his practitioner studies in 2018, and professionally, he is a global executive search leader with a wide variety of experiences in the media and entertainment industries. Now, you can read more, much more about Sean and his interesting biography on our website practitioner page. But I like what he wrote 
uh, in part in his bio, he said, the teachings of science of mind are a true blessing and have brought so many powerful transformations to my beliefs and experiences, proving the ancient wisdom, change your thoughts, change your life. It is a joy to welcome you, Sean. And now let's check in with each other. Here we are in a brand new year. I am so happy knowing you're still out there. <laughs> Dare I say it's a wonder you're there? How are you doing? What are your hopes and plans for 2022? Let's stay in touch this year as it unfolds. I do affirm for you a new year of purpose, peace, joy, and wonder. And to you, our team of financial contributors, you are a wonder. Thank you. You are an absolutely essential part of all that makes it possible for us to share our message, our caring, our connection, and especially remotely online as we've been doing for the past two years. Thank you. Now, many of you have asked when, if, I should say, if and when we will be meeting in person. Well, so much is still unknown, but I can tell you this. This month, your Center for Spiritual Living Sarasota Board of Trustees will be visioning about this, opening our hearts and minds to divine guidance and ideas. And while in the visioning process, we will certainly be open to ideas and possibilities guided by that vision. And the Board of Trustees will be joined by the practitioners in that visioning process. It's going to be powerful, so stay tuned. So my theme for this month is wonder. It is an invitation for you to start 2022 knowing you can live in wonder every day. How about this? Take it as your 2022 one word guide, wonder. To think about living in wonder energizes me and it inspires me. Last week's message was all about living in everyday wonder, every day. So much of our world or in our world during these past two years has been disheartening and as a result, there is a tendency to view life through the lens of jaded cynicism and discouragement. But the truth is, nothing in our outer world will give us lasting well-being and that's not the bad news because we can begin to change our experience right now by seeing things through a different lens, the lens of wonder. Now, last week I talked about how there is wonder all around and even within us in the most minute ways and magnificent ways about recognizing the, ex the extraordinary in the ordinary, but that we overlook or dismiss the simple things and miss the wonder that they hold. Uh, basically, I was saying if we're not in awe, in wonder, we're not paying attention. Rabbi Abraham Joshua Heschel expressed this so beautifully. He said, our goal should be to live life in radical amazement. Get up in the morning and look at the world in a way that takes nothing for granted. Everything is phenomenal. Never treat life casually. To be spiritual is to be amazed and in wonder. Amen. Some of these things, wonder, wonderful things, some things will seem miraculous. Others will be simply the extraordinary things you notice hidden in the everyday ordinary, hidden in plain sight. Ernest Holmes, the architect of our teaching, said it this way. He said, let your mind dwell on the wonder that life is. Even the common things of life assume a natural goodness, beauty, and dignity when viewed as a whole. Mm. You know, in a way, wonder, the lens of wonder, reveals our oneness in that oneness uh, that is our con interconnectedness. Let me say that again. In a way, wonder, the lens of wonder, reveals our oneness and in that oneness, our interconnectedness. So today, let's reflect on the wonder that everything is interconnected and consider how we can take this awareness into our daily living. Because frankly, we don't always feel or foster this interconnection. We know it, but we don't always feel it or encourage it. Now, everything originated as a divine idea 
and form, that is everything we experience with our senses and our humanness, is an expression of that divine idea. It's all one thing expressing. Or as it has often been said, there's only one of us here. It is all God or spirit or infinite or higher power, whatever you choose to call it. Ernest Holmes said, we envision all people, all beings, and all life as expressions of God. Hmm. I realize that you know this. It's at the core of all we teach. But it's a big idea, I know. And yet, because of our culture, our conditioning, we so often behave otherwise. We look around us and we point to people and circumstances and, well, it looks like anything but that. So today, let's recognize the exquisite wonder and meaning of this oneness. It truly is a wonder. Or as someone said it and spelled it, O-N-E-D-E-R, wonder. The physicist Neil deGrasse Tyson speaks of this often and eloquently. He points it out from the perspective of science. He said, we are all connected to each other biologically, to the earth chemically, and to the rest of the universe atomically. Now, Ernest Holmes said it this way. He said, when we stand in awe of grandeur, something deep within us responds. Something within us embraces the ocean. Something within us melts into the mountain, and we become one with them. I've noticed that sometimes witnessing this in nature, we can see more clearly and tangibly our oneness. Here's an example. Several years ago, this story appeared on the front page of the San Francisco Chronicle. A 50-foot female humpback whale had become entangled in a web of crab traps and lines weighing hundreds of pounds, so heavy that they caused her to struggle to, ta to stay afloat. And she also had hundreds of yards of line, rope, wrapped around her body, and a line was tugging in her mouth. Somehow, a fisherman spotted her, and he radioed an environmental group for help. They came, and they worked for hours with curved knives to cut those ropes. It was so dangerous, because one swipe of her tail could be fatal. But when she was free, she swam in what seemed like joyous circles. And she then came back to each and every diver one at a time and nudged them, pushed them gently around. She thanked them. They said it was the most incredibly beautiful experience of their lives. And the man who cut the rope out of her mouth said her eye was following him the whole time and he will never be the same. Wonder a powerful example of our interconnection with all. So now let's consider this in our human interactions. Brene Brown wrote, Spirituality is recognizing and celebrating that we are inextricably connected to one another by a power greater than all of us and that our connection to that power and to one another is grounded in love and belonging. So beautiful. Native American Chief Seattle said it very succinctly this way. He said, man did not weave the web of life. He is merely a strand in it. And whatever he does to the web, he does to himself. Doesn't get much more clear than that, does it? If all of us on this planet could grasp and live by this, wouldn't it be transformational? Brene Brown again, she said, we are all wired for connections in our biology. From the time we're born, we need connection to thrive physically, spiritually, and intellectually. But connection is simply an energy, and it can serve our well-being, or it can be debilitating and destructive. That part is up to us. Let's note this inevitable connection is an energy positive or not? No, we can't, we can't fundamentally disconnect, but we individually and collectively can, hmm, and so often do, 
block our awareness of that interconnectedness. We do it by being defensive, self-protective, and blaming, afraid to be vulnerable, authentic. And we reinforce those reactions through creating a story. We have a storyteller in our head, yammering all the time, and it doesn't recognize the truth of our oneness with the Creator and our interconnectedness with all beings. For example, when we, when we think of those who are incarcerated, doesn't that conjure up a lot of dark stories? And yet, here is a beautiful example of deep connection that evokes wonder and a visceral resonance from the part of us that knows that oneness. The headline in the news said, Prison inmates learn to quilt and now make amazing personalized gifts for foster care children. Crafting the colorful, cozy bed covers has become an outlet for incarcerated men not only to express their creativity, but to give something positive back to the communities from which they came. This is in Missouri's South Central Correctional Facility. Over the past 10 years, more than 2,000 personalized quilts have been assembled by the inmates, and they've been donated to children in, foster, in the state's foster care system, or they have been auctioned off to fund local charitable organizations. Now, one of the inmates, named Fred, said, when I learned that I could help bring a smile to a child's face, I was all in. Right now, I'm working on a puppy quilt that will go to a 13-year-old boy. I don't know him. I don't know anything about him, but I have a feeling he's going to love it. One man, after he began serving his sentence in 20, 2015, along with his other prison chores, spends seven hours a day, five days a week, quilting with his peers. And he said, here was a way for me to give back. According to the group's coordinator, keeping the prisoners' minds and hearts engaged while knowing they're making useful contributions to the community has been a game changer even for those who may spend the rest of their lives behind bars, you can see a change in their attitude. A light flips on like, oh, this is a new avenue. I can actually be a part of something. Knowing firsthand the feeling of being forgotten by society, those inmates who participate in the quilting circle strive to personalize each quilt for the foster care kids to let them know someone cares that they're not throwaways. One of them said, you see the names of these kids in foster care, you see a one-year-old or a two-year-old, he said, and it kind of breaks your heart. This lets us know we're human. I can't express enough how it feels to be doing this. Connection, connection. Only one of us here. Now, Brene Brown writes about it this way. She said, I divine, define connection as the energy that exists between people when they feel seen, heard, and valued. When they can give and receive without judgment. And when they derive sustenance and strength from that relationship. <laughs> oh my, how? But how do we do that? I mean, I know there are lots of self-help uh, books and guides that tell us how to do that, but for this month, in our theme of wonder, think about how author and activist Valerie Carr expressed it. She wrote a book called See No Stranger, and in this book she asks the question, how do we love in a time of rage? How do we fix a broken world while, none, uh, while not breaking ourselves? And she invites us to see no stranger, but instead look at others and say, you are part of me, I do not yet know. You are part of me, I do not yet know. And she goes on to say, if you know how to wonder, then you already have what you need in order to learn how to love. And she says, starting from that place of wonder, it can transform a relationship, a community, even a nation. Well, I am so inspired by the words of 
her, and also these words of the incredible Archbishop Desmond Tutu, who recently passed on. He said, we are made for goodness. We're made for love. We're made for togetherness. We are made to tell the world that there are no outsiders. All are welcome. Black, brown, white, yet red, yellow, rich, poor, educated, male, female, gay, straight, all, all, all. We all belong to this family, this human family, God's family. This concept is embraced in the one African word, Ubuntu. Ubuntu. It means I am because you are. Or it means a person is a person because of other and all persons. <laughs> wonder, wonder everywhere. Everything, everything is a wonder. And we are so connected because of that. It is a wonder. And as Bob is going to sing the song by Ray Stevens, Everything is Beautiful in Its Own Way, he's singing, there's wonder everywhere. So take that with you into this week, knowing you, you are a wonder. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Everything is beautiful in its own way. Starry summer night, a snow covered winter's day, and everybody's beautiful in their own way. Under God's heaven, the world's gonna find. There is none so blind as the one who will not see. We must not close our minds. We must let our thoughts be free. For every hour that passes by, of the beholder and everything is beautiful in its own way like the starry summer night or snow shouldn't care about the length of his hair or the color of his skin. Don't worry about what shows from without, but the love that lives within. Just take a little time to look on the good side, my friend, and straighten it out in your mind. Cause everything is beautiful in its own way. Like the starry summer night or snow.
Thank you, Reverend Karen, for your beautiful message reminding us to look for the wonder all around us. And Bob, for your reminder in music to acknowledge the beauty in everything. Now, as we move into our time of offering, I want to let you know that here at the Center for Spiritual Living Sarasota, we're available to support you in knowing the power and presence of your spiritual essence. We offer prayer support, inspiration, encouragement, and opportunities for virtual community and connection. And we're so grateful for your generous financial support of this center that allows us to support you. There are three easy ways to share your offering. On your screen, you'll see our website, which is www.cslsarasota.com, where you can choose a couple of options. You can select the donate button, which allows you to contribute via PayPal or by credit card. Or you can mail a check to our address. You can also set up automatic contributions through your own online banking. And now I invite you to place your hand over your heart as you reflect on your gift, blessing it as you share it, and know this with me. My gift goes forth to heal, to bless, and to prosper and the divine flow returns it to me multiplied abundantly, abundantly. Now, please join me in our offering affirmation on your screen. I give thanks that I may share of my good, my love, and my support. Thank you so much. Do you need prayer support? I'd like to draw attention to the green prayer request button. We invite you to use this feature to send us your request. Our five licensed spiritual practitioners, Kathleen Frankert, Ron Frost, Nicole Leeds, Sean Scanlon, and me, are available to know and affirm spiritual truth with and for you in whatever challenge you may be experiencing. We're also available for one-hour spiritual coaching sessions by appointment. These sessions offer the opportunity to explore a deeper understanding and practical application of the spiritual truth that transcends your problem or challenge. For more information, check our website under the staff link at the left side of the screen and then select practitioners. Here on our website, you can also sign up to receive our weekly email newsletter. Please also check out our Facebook page for posts about upcoming events. I have one announcement for you this morning. Our Spiritual Living Circle meets via Zoom every Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. to discuss an article from the current month's Science of Mind magazine. This week, we'll be discussing the article by John Waterhouse in the January issue entitled God in the Mundane. This is a wonderful no-cost opportunity for social connection and to more fully explore your own spiritual development by connecting with and learning from other like-minded individuals. If you'd like to participate, please email me at the address shown on your screen, and I'll send you the Zoom link, article, and discussion guide. Now, as we conclude this sacred time together, let us move forward into the week ahead, making a conscious choice to look for the beauty and wonder all around us. I invite you to listen or join in singing our closing song, Let There Be Peace on Earth. Thank you for being with us, and have a great week, everyone. And let it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth, the peace that was meant to be with God.
peace on earth and live.